Welcome to Role Players, a podcast from stage to stream. Hey, welcome to our first episode of Role Players. Um, I'm Jonathan Hoskins, and this is one of my best friends with me, Jonathan Long. What's up, man? What's up? What's up? What's up? We are, um, we're role players. We're called role players because we're a bunch of, um, how you say, nerds, theater people. Theater nerds, theater dorks, losers. <laughs> but, but we have secondary passions and that is, we love sports, um, which is not as common in the theater world, uh, amongst people like us, but we love sports and we love to talk about sports. So what we're going to do here is, you know, we're going to talk about sports, but also, from our, you know, theatrical perspective, we are performers. Yeah. yeah. So uh, <laughs> no one else is doing this, uh, and I know there are tons of different sports content, tons of different sports content out there. But uh, like Long said, there's not much sports talk in the theater world. So yeah, if um, we we founded this thing called Stage to Stream, uh, maybe we got some traffic from that. Uh, we are an umbrella underneath yeah. that. With more so, po- podcasts soon to come if, um, if, from people who are better than us hosting them. Uh, but we had to do this. <laughs> if you're in the wrong place, if you're in the wrong place and you're looking for our, our arts content, this is this not is it. Not it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is actually going to be a real deep um, dive into some real sports. Our first episode, we're going to talk about the NBA playoffs uh, right before it kicks off. We're going to go through all the series prices um, and get our picks for that in the playoffs. And... I'm pretty excited because this just the NBA is back at all. It's been fantastic, but we had to do this podcast because when we call each other, this is what we talk about all the time. And I don't know about you guys. Yes, I mean, (laughs) we'll be on the phone for upwards of two hours talking about sports. So we're like, why not share our opinions with people that don't know us (laughs) so they can tell us how right or wrong we are? (laughs) Yes, and I promise. I promise not to yell like Stephen A or make up stupid things like well, Skip Bayless about why I don't like I'm Damian so Lillard. I'm so glad that this organically <laughs> happened because I had this pulled up for this episode and I wanted to mention it. So we'll just start it <laughs> off like this. Have you seen what Stephen A said this past week? He said two different things that were really interesting and I'm only going to give you one. I'll ignore the one about not being able to withhold from sex for three months. We won't talk about that one. <laughs> we'll talk about the tweet I have not. That Stephen A. said on Twitter. This is the quote. Are you ready? This is a response, a retweet from someone who said, Stephen A. for president. And it had a goat emoji. And he said, I'd run if I had the support, period. Although I'm no politician, comma, I'm about what's best for the country, period. I'd like my chances versus Trump or Biden, period, especially in a debate, period, and capital Y, yes, comma. Just pausing in the middle of this. The sentence just started with a lowercase and and a capital Y, yes, and yes, I'm serious, dot, 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 although I'm obviously not doing it. Although I'm no politician, I'm about what's best for the country. I'd like my chances versus Trump or Biden, especially in a debate. I agree with him on that. I would love to watch that debate. (laughs) He says, and yes, I'm serious, dot, 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 although I'm obviously not doing it. (laughs) (laughs) I would love a Trump, Biden, Stephen A. Smith debate. Um. This is right up there for me with when Stephen H said, uh, referring to the OJ trial, no offense against Johnny Cochran, but that if he would have had the evidence that Marsha Clark and Christopher Darden had, that he would have won that case. And he says, the best part about it is he says, I've often said that. <laughs> uh, Stephen A thinks he is like, the best argumentative person in the world. Stephen A is, I mean, his irrational confidence turned into rational confidence, and he is the epitome of success in the American dream. So, Stephen A, kudos to you, <laughs> but we are going to talk about what you talk about uh, because that because you're important <laughs> and you should be president. And as much as we laugh, you would be a better president. Honestly, you, you would be a better president <laughs> like, than both of the candidates. Honestly. Um, 
Yeah. So <laughs> thanks, Stephen A., for always keeping us laughing. Uh, we're we're going to try to keep you guys laughing in this podcast and do some different things that aren't always super uh, sports, like analytics-based, those kind of things. We're going to talk a lot about how stories fit into sports and narratives in sports. Uh, I remember watching the 2015 finals, 16 finals, when the Cavs won. The one the Cavs won with Long. And I was so uh, entranced with the story of that, not just the basketball that was being played at that time by the great Warriors team and LeBron at the height of his career. But LeBron, how that championship in Cleveland meant more than any one title that Jordan won because Mm -hmm. it didn't mean more than all six combined. That's he's not even close, but, (laughs) but it did mean more than any other one. That title felt bigger than it was for the land. It was for the land. Cleveland. LeBron, LeBron came back. Yes. And, and brought justice to the land for leaving for Miami. And just him crying and like the sweat and tears pouring from his body at once on the floor in that game with someone who's always so composed, just letting it go. That's probably one of my favorite like story moments in sports. It's definitely, it's definitely one of the best moments in NBA history, if not. Yeah, and I mean best like uplifting because if we're talking about most interesting, then we would go much darker. Anyway, from the tragedy in the world to the best thing that's happening in the bubble, like the only positive thing really (laughs) that has not disappointed us yet in NBA basketball. So we're going to get to our picks now. Uh, Thanks for joining in for the first episode. Enjoy this first episode, guys. First series on the table, the Los Angeles Lakers. I am in Los Angeles, and I hear a lot of Lakers coverage, so I've been keeping up with them all year. Uh, versus versus probably the best eight seed in recent history, the Portland Trail Blazers. Definitely putting the, was it 06, 07 Warriors, the We Believe squad? I think that was them. <laughs> they were pretty great AC, but yeah, this is and definitely the hottest team in basketball right now since the Suns were eliminated. Yeah, it didn't, <laughs> didn't quite make the the bubble the cut there. Uh, but first, first off, yes, Damian Lillard is on fire. CJ McCollum is ultra clutch. Uh, Carmelo is enjoying his rebirth. Nurkic is a man on steroids. Whatever. Uh, Carmelo also said Damian Lillard is the best teammate he's ever played with. Let's not forget that Melo mm. played with Allen Iverson. <laughs> no, known for being a great teammate. Him and uh, <laughs> J.R. Smith. Definitely. Uh, Wasn't Kenyon Martin on that team? Kenyon Martin, yeah. Kenyon Martin was on the Nuggets, yeah. J.R. Smith, didn't, didn't J.R. play for him in Denver and New York? I believe so. He doesn't get that love? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but with all that happening, I just want to point out, the Blazers still cannot stop anybody. Uh, they cannot get a stop, but they can score. Oh, no, no, they no. can score late. Um, even that Philly game with Simmons already out and Embiid leaving after like six minutes, they barely won that game because they couldn't stop well, Al Horford and Tobias Harris. I think it's it's in, in terms of mass, they can't stop. Like they're gonna they're gonna give up points, but. I believe Damian Lillard may be one of the most clutch players in the NBA. I I totally agree that he is one of the most clutch players. Because he not only puts up points in the clutch, but that's steal. Oh, that was amazing. It was a defensive masterpiece. With the Harlem Globetrotter (laughs) dribble, just to keep it alive while he was laying on the floor. Right, right. So, like, yes, they do have trouble as a team making stops. However... I think that Damian Lillard is clutch enough on both sides of the ball to make a stop down down the line. I don't know, man. I mean, I mean, he's he's going to give up points. <laughs> he may make a clutch stop, but uh, he's not going to be the one defending LeBron or Anthony Davis. So maybe he will absolutely get not. a clutch deal on Caruso. <laughs> <laughs> on- I mean, I mean, on both sides of this game the matchup between the Lakers and the Trailblazers is very weird. 
Yeah, I mean, neither of them have defenders to stop the other one's best players, right? So uh, right. Trevor Ariza, obviously not in the bubble um, for really good reasons. And really the only wing defender that the Blazers have to put on LeBron is Melo. Um, maybe now Gary Trent Jr., if you want to play him up to three. Um, neither guys I think you really want guarding LeBron. And then who's guarding Anthony Davis? Nurkic, I guess? Uh, and if they have... If they're using Anthony Davis at the four and having McGee or Howard at the five, it really, who is who is guarding him? Because Anthony Davis took out the Portland Trailblazers basically by himself a couple years ago and swept them. With you can't say by himself. That was one of Drew Holiday's best series ever. Yes. Okay. Drew Holiday's <laughs> best series ever. Even if LeBron has one of his worst ever, I feel like the Lakers are uh, – look, I feel like the worry for the Lakers is just overhyped. Like, I get they've struggled since the bubble, and I get the Blazers are really hot right now, but the Lakers have been really good all season, and they can still defend. As long as they can hit a couple shots, I like them easy to win. But here's the thing, is LeBron or Anthony Davis have to be playing very well. Yeah, that's true. I mean, Kuzma has a couple games here and there that are like, oh, yeah, Kuzma could really lead. Yeah, you're definitely if, right. If necessary. That. I mean, because the rest of that projected starting lineup is JaVale McGee, Danny Green, and Contavious Caldwell Pope. Now, the argument that the Lakers won't be able to produce, like, because I agree with you, those two have to ball out, and that's how they win. Uh, and that's happened all season until the bubble. And some people are like, I've I've heard a lot of LeBron has lost a little bit of his first step, and it is a little slower. Of course, it's still one of the best first steps in the league (laughs) because he's freaking LeBron James. And if he really is going to play the way he's played in this bubble the whole time and no one else from the Lakers steps up, then, yeah, the Blazers could push them to six or seven and maybe win. Um, But it's this thing called playoff LeBron. I don't know. I feel like people have forgotten about playoff LeBron and how he takes yeah, it up to another level. He would have to take it up to another level from what he's been doing in the bubble. And LeBron in the bubble and that whole team in the bubble has not been that impressive. Yes, but when has LeBron been impressive in games where he hasn't needed to be? That's fair. and that's, that's a fair assessment. I mean, it's just it's hard to separate their bubble output with what their playoff output is going to be because the bubble is the last thing we've seen them do. And so it, in other words, it's more natural recency bias. Well, yes, exactly. Right. I mean, we don't know. We don't know that they're just going to click it together in the playoffs right. again, like they were doing earlier in their season. Um, and let's not forget that like Damian Lillard has been doing this all season. He's averaged, upwards of 30 plus points per game this season not to mention he is only the third player in nba history to have 360 plus point games yeah. or sorry he's the, he's sorry correction he's the second player so so in nba I history. Guess, i guess my question in response to that is so you're picking the blazers to win this series is that what you're picking i can't uh, see that's a hard one because is it? it's, it's always hard it's, it's always hard to bet against lebron it is Right, but I think unless the Lakers show me something different than what they showed me these last eight games, I'm picking the Blazers. The Lakers have to go in; they have to be hot from the start. They can't go down three games to the Blazers and come back. I just don't see it happening. They're not gonna go down three games to the Blazers. All right, not gonna. I I don't. They're not gonna go. I don't know. There's no home court advantage, so like it doesn't really matter. I mean. Look, I get if you're just saying based on what you've, you've seen in the bubble, but you got to remember that the Lakers came back to this bubble thinking championship, knowing that they had nothing to play for in these eight games. And Damian Lillard said, if I don't get a chance to play to get into the playoffs, I'm not coming to the bubble. But my point, and my point with that did. being is Damian Lillard came in knowing he had to win immediately, right? The Lakers know that they are ramping up to the playoffs. They know that these eight games didn't mean much. That's why at the end of that game, Kuzma, the end of the Denver game that Kuzma took that shot. He needs this experience and we need to know we can count on him late or if we can't. Right. In the playoffs, LeBron is going to take that shot because they're going to want to win. And that is, you know, that's happened the whole time. This is how LeBron works. He's trying to get AD to go off this game. He's trying to see if Kuzma's ready the next game. I mean, 
that's just a bold assessment that Le- LeBron is is setting up his team for practice. Basically, it, is what you're saying. <laughs> but it's not bold because <laughs> if you say Damian Lillard's been doing this all season, well, you have to look at what LeBron has been doing his whole career. Here's the thing. I still see a possibility of the Blazers winning this. All that being said, of course, I definitely see where you're coming from because the Lakers are ramping up and they got to ramp up right now. Like you said, man, they can't really, you know, they can't go down in the series 2-0. They can't they can't get down in the series cuz the stress for them is going to be on. Right? And the Blazers are not going to be playing with that kind of stress. They're going to be playing loose. And maybe more tired. They're, but they're already warm. They are. Now, C.J. McCollum's back is huge in this. We saw him go off knowing that his back is still struggling or still giving him problems, and he still went off and carried them at the end of that game. But um, I think John Morant was guarding him at the end of that game, right? So that's <laughs> – I mean – in fairness, it'll probably be Caldwell Pope, Danny Green, or Caruso guarding him at the end of this game. But playoff basketball is different, and CJ was not taking it to the hoop. And I think in a series, you're going to be able to figure that out. And if he can't be productive and it comes down to Dame and Nurkic and what Nurkic is going to have to do defensively in this series on Anthony Davis, yeah, I just don't see them really being able to pull it off. It's, it's going to be a weird one because, again, I'm looking at, at Damian Lillard and I'm looking at a man that is not afraid to put up a shot at any time with anyone in his face. He doesn't have that mentality of like, oh, I've got to get rid of this ball. But he's smart enough to know, OK, I can pass it to this teammate and, and they'll put the shot up, too. So my thing is like Damian Lillard is coming in into, into this game both loose and fearless and I just I, I I always have a problem betting against LeBron and I will always say that LeBron James is arguably the best player in NBA history but it's a team game and in if Anthony Davis is off if LeBron has a slow game which again from the bubble that's what we've seen you have a red hot Blazers team coming into the playoffs where there is no home court advantage, really. Yeah, it's the it's the perfect storm to upset that Lakers team. It is, and and what'll be a little disappointing is if this happens because I think in our show I think we're gonna end up talking a little bit more about narratives and storylines, and because you know we're from the dramatic world, that's what we care about. Now, if the Blazers <laughs> win this game, there will be two things that happen. One is incredible scrutinism for LeBron. Oh, always. Always. And the other thing is going to be the ev- the whole bubble playoffs from this point will basically be negated. Because we'll <laughs> say this was weird. It didn't this wasn't the right thing. There should have been home court advantage. It doesn't matter now cuz the 8 seed won. And that'll be a little disappointing. And but it'll really be disappointing if Damian Lillard's not in the playoffs anymore. I do not want this to be the matchup. I do not want this matchup. But I'm just looking at the teams in the playoffs and specifically the teams in the West. And if I'm the Lakers, I would rather play the Mavericks. If I had to pick a West team, I'd rather play the Mavericks. Uh, maybe, maybe the Jazz or the Nuggets. I don't know, man. I mean, the Mavericks have the same problem that the Blazers have with not being able to defend the wings. But I think but look, the Mavericks, as great as Lillard is, um, as great as he has been, you, you do have to – when you have a series to plan against somebody, it's you know it's easier to plan against him than against LeBron. Like we saw with Steph in the finals, you couldn't plan against Steph when he had other people there. You couldn't really game plan against that. But once his supporting cast started to go, they were trapping him, and the traps were working because he couldn't dish it out to those other stars. But that's, again, insinuating that the supporting cast for the Blazers isn't going to be there. And, yes, I understand the McCollum injury – and his back giving him issues and all that like that is a legitimate concern. But Nurkic played really well in this last game. Nur- yeah, Nurkic is deserves a lot of credit, man. He is balling out and he like so many effort plays and he's such a skilled big man. And then then you have Melo who showed that he was worth being picked on a team again. Look. Okay. As hot as they are, remember 
they are not. It took them beating the Nets. Like they needed to beat the Nets. They put yeah, everything they had in one shot. Okay. And in that Nets game, I watched in the third quarter. There was a play. It's happened a few times, but this time Nurkic actually visibly got upset because the ball. There was a swing around, and it came to Melo, and Melo should have had the extra pass to Nurkic, but he dribbled in for a mid-range jumper and missed, and then didn't get back on defense. <laughs> and Nur- I saw Nurkic immediately hang his head as soon as uh, Carmelo shot, and I was like, mm, "That is something." No, and, and I, I think that 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 team is filled with defensive liability. Right. Well, I think ultimately they'll be at least the Lakers have bodies to slow down Portland stars. Like I said, we're going to miss Avery Bradley, but I do have Danny Green, Caruso, and KCP all competent defenders to throw at Dame and CJ. They have big men to throw at Nurkic. I think that as long as LeBron stays active, he'll be able to defend Melo when he has to. I'm pretty sure Melo will just shoot anyway, no matter who's guarding him. So that doesn't even really matter. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but and, but Me- okay, Melo does does make some. He's been a great pickup for them. Shots like, that definitely. Right, right. But he he, t- he takes some shots that I'm like I don't know about that one. But I will say later in these last few bubble games, he has been a little more willing to make that yeah, extra Yeah, I mean, pass. I d- definitely think he's playing the best, um, I don't know, team basketball. That's what you want to say other than when he played in the Olympics. And it's in the sense of Portland lets him do what he does really well. And he has adjusted his game to help fit in there. He's been a really good catch-and-shoot three-point shooter. Uh, ultimately, though, people need to – I think some people are seeing him hit these late corner threes and going, oh, my God, it's Melo. Now now that's Mello's their big back. three, back. No. CJ, Damon. Melo, it's like <laughs> Melo for them right now is basically Robert Ori um, in San Antonio, <laughs> not in, with the Lakers or the Rockets in San Antonio. To say that Melo is their big three is a real disservice to I think, Nurkic. I think, I think Nurkic is amazing. Um, but this leads me to ask you, where do you value Damian Lillard as an NBA point guard? If you if you take the moment of right now, I would take him over anybody. However, I think I'm biased against James Harden because if you look at everything Damian Lillard has done, uh, James Harden has been doing that offensively, and they're both null on the defensive side. That's fair. Um, for me, and I think That's you – would echo this is I trust Dame Lillard at the end of the game more than James Harden because I've seen also him I've I just like Damian Lillard's energy better yeah he's player. funner to watch he gets um, my adrenaline going like right I'm pumped right. up he's having fun and but he's angry at the same yeah. time and that's amazing <laughs> James Harden is one of those players that like I'm gonna look back and I'm gonna understand how phenomenal he was at what he did doesn't mean I like watching him play if we are a show that blends sports and um, theater, we do have to credit he does some amazing stage combat. Oh, he's a great actor. Yeah. He, <laughs> In terms of like selling a foul. Oh, yeah, man. He really knows how to sell a hit. Uh, so, go I have one more question. Uh, Damian Lillard was in the 2012 draft class, right? Yeah. The number one pick of that class was Anthony Davis, which I understand that pick. The players in between him were Michael Kidd Gilchrist, Ooh. Bradley Beal, Dion Waiters, and Thomas Robinson. <laughs> Look, I am a Hornets <laughs> fan, and you know this. Well, not really. I mean, I, well, we're, we're from that Charlotte area. Yeah, and I grew up with the Hornets, and then they left and became... <laughs> The New Orleans the Hornets and then the Pelicans. Goats. And so this draft is especially painful because not only did Anthony gave Davis go to a team that should have been the Hornets. In but, Charlotte, yeah. But then uh, what is now the Hornets drafted Michael Kidd Gilchrist, who is nothing, who has done nothing. Maybe if Michael Kidd Gilchrist was drafted uh, by the Warriors and did the Draymond Green stuff, he would have had a decent career. But guess what? He <laughs> didn't. He went to the Hornets and he sucked and he never scored. Why'd you get me mad? Why'd you have to do this? <laughs> Before we move forward, uh, Damian Lillard also dropped a mixtape from the bubble on SoundCloud. So if you haven't listened to that, it's out. <laughs> oh, it's it's ca- I think it's called Live from the Bubble. I think he dropped it today or yesterday. So yeah, 
But yeah, we can move on from that. Wow, series. I can I can see the stories now on ESPN <laughs> when he loses. Did Dame get distracted by his rap career? Just too busy rapping to to shut up and dribble. Looking at you, all the Fox News people. What? <laughs> I, feel, I feel like I feel like uh, you're just gonna give Skip Bayless exactly the next thing to say. Uh, look up their feud because <laughs> they have a feud going right now. Okay, so before we finish with the Blazers and Lakers, I think we should place our bets. The Vegas odds uh, according to my bookie. The Blazers are plus 390 to win the series, and the Lakers are minus 530. I th- and I think that the Lakers are going to win this in six. I would not bet on these odds, though. <laughs> minus 530 is, uh, I think I would just pass on that bet. What about you, Long? Would you take the Blazers at plus 390? So would you lay $100 to win 390 on the Blazers? Is that a good bet? I th- I think a hundred is the most I would put. Yeah. Well, we're not actually talking about our money. We don't spend money. We don't. Yeah. 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 yeah no. no, no, no. Um, but if I if I had to put money, I think that it's intriguing enough to where you could make a little bit off that if they do pull off the upset that people are are thinking they could. Um, I would I would avoid that Lakers odds, but I think three ninety is not bad if you want to put a little bit on the Blazers. I'm not. I wouldn't go crazy because it is still LeBron. <laughs> yeah definitely i think if if you're a lakers believer and you really want to bet on the lakers i would bet for them to win the west because i do think if they get their gears going and do beat the blazers easily then what are it's those gonna get odds a for them easy. to win the west um let's see championship odds conference champions for the lakers to win the west is plus 160 and for the Clippers to win is plus 150. And then lower is uh, Rockets, Nuggets. Yeah, I, I I wouldn't... Honestly, I would wait to see how they look. Because right. ultimately you're going to have... More than likely you're going to have a Lakers-Clippers showdown. And I would rather just bet on that series. Because neither of those other odds impress me. Okay, next series. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Oklahoma City Thunder versus the Houston Rockets. Um, Long, do you know the latest on the Westbrook injury? He is at least out game one. Um, I think that series really hinges on on what game he comes back. Um, Whatever game I, that he comes back, I would almost guarantee a win for the Rockets, right? He's on just that, that game at much least. energy. He's worth at least a game. I also um, think that without Westbrook, Harden is going to win a game by himself. He, where he just shoots so much, one of them, he's at least he's going to go off, right? It, it makes the most sense. Um, I, I don't think the Thunder are exceptionally deep in any position. I think they're good. Um, I think that I think they're pretty. I think they're pretty deep at guard. Yeah, I guess that that's the one. But like in, in terms they of they do they, but they do roll out that three guard lineup and like if if Chris Paul is like he did in the Houston series versus Golden State, if Chris Paul tweaks a hamstring and is even right. limited, they they're not going to win. No, um, and and I think that just in terms of of sheer point creation, even with just James Harden, the Rockets have a better chance there. Um, and I think Robert Covington can can help, but I do think that they need Russell Westbrook back at least at some point in that series. I'm hoping that, and I'm not a, I'm not a huge Rockets fan because I'm not a fan of James Harden's play style. And if Russell Westbrook is out for an extended period of time, it will affect the the overall way that that's going to go. Yeah, I but guess. I would still say safe bet. Is I, I think this series is very up in the air, especially with Westbrook's injury. But even, look, the Thunder have been counted out all year. And I've watched right. a, a few of their, a good bit of their games, more than other people. Because back when I had a fantasy league, I had Shea Gildas Alexander. It was a great pickup for me. Anyway, I don't want to talk about that team. The season got discontinued. But <laughs> this Thunder team knows what they are. They know how to play together. And I know that sounds cliche, but coming into the bubble, that's a huge advantage. And I think that advantage also works for Houston because they have a very clear identity of how they run things. 
But what makes this a real series is that the Thunder win close games, and that versus James Harden playoff crunch time gives me concerns. And Chris Paul, uh, yeah, I think he really wants to win this series. Don't you think he really wants to win this series? And be- I mean, do you blame him? No, not at all. I mean, <laughs> for him to be able to win with the leftover pieces and say, oh, actually, I'm better than Westbrook because I can win with these people now and beat, I can beat both of you guys with what everyone else thought was a worse team. I, I think really the key other than clutch execution, which I trust the Thunder more on, is going to be like you said with Robert Covington playing a lot of four and five with P.J. Tucker versus Steven Adams. And also what James Harden do we get? Because James Harden has been at times notoriously bad in the playoffs, especially with his ability to hold on to the ball. Um, yeah, it, it, I think that'll definitely play into it. Um, well, I think we're that Thunder series when I mean when James Harden still played for the Thunder in the finals. Um, he played really great in the playoffs and hit a lot of clutch shots up into that final series, right? And I think the theme with Harden is once he gets tired and overworked, then he starts to screw up in the pressure moments. And that's why they need Westbrook there because Westbrook will take the reins. He will be a boost of energy and he will keep them in games so that Harden can execute better late. But Westbrook is just Westbrook is a he's a different man. He is. Uh that man is from a whole nother planet, man. He Remember when his face got dented in and then it just <laughs> he just kept playing? That's I mean, that's the thing with Russell Westbrook is you know when he comes in, you are gonna get a maniac out there. Like that man flies around the court like he's nobody else his his speed is ridiculous i mean he he his agility is off the, the charts yeah if he's 100 percent, it's going to be is he going to be efficient down the stretch um that's true so yeah i i think houston has more talent but i trust the thunder more late in games and which is crazy to but hear. This but is the, I understand. Right? But this is, I think this <laughs> is kind of the same with the Lakers Blazers series in a sense. And I think that the Lakers players are better. But at the end of the game, if it's close, I think the person out of anybody on the court I want is Damian Lillard to shoot. The person that I want to run the offense for anybody in the uh, Rockets Thunder series is Chris Paul. Uh, well, and I, I think one good thing is Dennis Schroeder came back. That's huge for them. That's huge for them. Um, Diallo has been playing decent. Yeah. The last two or three games. Um, and so they do have players that could pull it off. It's, it's, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be one of the more... Um, I, I still think that the Blazer series is going to be the most interesting just because... I'm really on that Damian Lillard hype train. He's really brought me along, um, along with him. But I do think this is going to be one of the more interesting series because I think it could be a defining moment in James Harden's legacy as a playoff player. Um, if he can't get past this group of leftovers, then what does that say about James Harden? Yeah, I think I think uh, D'Antoni is gone if they lose this series. That would be fair to say. Just give me the the over the the odds in general. Oh, the odds. Yeah, this should be the closest ones. I I think. Let's see. The Rockets are favored. The Rockets are minus one fifty, and the Thunder are plus one thirty. And so, do they have the odds for Game One? Because I would like to see how yeah. Russell Westbrook being out. Let's see. Okay, I have the I have the first round of games up. The so Game One. Yeah. See. This is why the series odds don't really make sense, right? Um, okay, so for Westbrook out, the money line on the Rockets to win the game is plus 100, so that's even. But the Thunder are favored, so they're minus 120, according to my bookie right now. Uh, the Thunder are favored by one and a half points. That's the spread. Uh, and oh, wow. the over-under is 225. So with 
with Westbrook out, the odds are saying that the Thunder are going to win the first game. Yeah. So if Westbrook's out more than one game and they win the first game, those odds have to do some crazy flipping. Yeah, and honestly, I think as the series goes on, it other than the Westbrook coming back, the Rockets and how they play, they play one way, playoffs or not, and when that comes to strategy and playoffs, it, it doesn't take much adjustments. So I give the advantage to Chris Paul and the Thunder as far as making adjustments in, within the series. So as they go, other than Westbrook coming back, I think that favors the Thunder. Um, and just in general, that each time the Rockets lose, there's more pressure on them than the Thunder. Uh, just for it to work, there's just always more pressure, I think, on James Harden. And, well, there's more pressure in the just going into this series on Definitely. the Rockets than there are the Thunder, because I don't think anyone thought the Thunder would be in a position like this. Um, yeah. And if they did, then they're probably Oklahoma City fans. <laughs> um, Definitely. I mean, one one of my best friends is a Oklahoma City fan and like diehard Thunder fan, and he definitely didn't see this coming at all. It's really heartbroken. But man, this team has ended up being really fun to watch. I've I've really enjoyed it. Um, and I think if if I was them, I really hope they go make a move to win soon. Um, which when we get to the 76ers, I have an idea for maybe how they could do that. Um, but we'll get to that in a second. So what's your pick for this series? Knowing what we know about if Westbrook's going to come back. Uh, I'm still picking the Rockets because I don't see Westbrook missing more than a game if he has anything to say about it. Yeah, this is hard. Uh, yeah, I'm going to live dangerously. <laughs> Just because they're slight underdogs, and I, I think it's a pretty even matchup. And if West, it's very possible Westbrook will not come back. And... I think that karma will help the Lakers out and give them an easier matchup in round two after they beat the Blazers. I think <laughs> they'll beat that, that LeBron will continue his banana boat demolition tour and after he beats Melo and beat Chris Paul. So I'm going to pick the Thunder in this series. Now, do I put money on either of these teams? Absolutely not. No. It's too, it's too close for me. I would, uh, I would wait to see how things go in a yes. lot of these series because, I, look, if if we find out Westbrook isn't coming back and the Thunder are winning the series. Or if we find out Westbrook shift, isn't coming back until game four or game three and right. the Thunder take a nice little lead. Then I bet Houston. Yes, because <laughs> then the odds the, have shifted. Right, because ultimately we can say all this stuff about how the series is going to go, but if Houston hits their threes four games, then they're going to win. Yes. That's how it works with Houston. Um, okay, so those are the two most interesting series. So we'll go a little quicker pace here. But next series, Miami versus Indiana. I know you like Miami. I do. Those uniforms always fire. <laughs> Not even just the uniforms, man. They got one of the most promising young players on the roster and Tyler Hero. I really like him. I think that he has a lot of potential. Um a lot of players on his team say he don't play, he doesn't play as young as he is. Um, I think he could be an important piece to Miami. So I, I like Miami. Um, Pacers have some problems. <laughs> they they have some some issues yeah. moving into this. I think this would be a much better series. Um, but Sabonis is still out indefinitely, and um, Oladipo's playing, but he's not really and himself right I mean you can't blame him for not being himself and I, I love Victor Oladipo um, I think he's a fun player to watch right but and also look he only had one good season y'all so for, to ask him to come back from a <laughs> injury and then do the best thing he ever did like I kind of think it's hard to say after the injury but I kind of think that season was more of an outlier for him which I mean he could come back I think and be what he was if he can get some good time off this summer. So maybe they should just pack up and go home now. Um. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, though, man, I really like uh, what Indiana's done as a Hornets fan to see a team that really a small market shouldn't. Team. Yeah, man, a very small market team, and to see a 
them always be competitive is kind of annoying as a <laughs> Hornets fan. Uh, but I, I like Miami in this series. Um, I think Jimmy Butler has fit really well for that team. I, I think that him and, and Tyler Hero play well together. Uh, I, I, I have a problem picking Indiana for the series. I, just, I can't bring myself to do it. What no it? way. If, if it was, <laughs> yeah, and, and that's why we'll hurry up and move on. Because, I mean, as fun as it's going to be to watch TJ Warren and Jimmy Butler, that's going to be super fun. This is not going to be a very competitive series, I don't think. I mean, I think games will be competitive. I but mean, I the, don't think the overall last, series The last will game be. of the bubble, the Heat played the Pacers. Right, and, and they knew that they were about to go to the playoffs and play each other. They got Molly Wap. But, <laughs> again, I, I Jimmy just Butler didn't play. <laughs> right, and, and he's done that a lot this season, and it hasn't seemed to affect their chemistry because they just have a good group and a good culture in Miami. Um, and I really just want to see them play the Bucks. So uh, let's pull up the odds here. For the series, the Heat are favored minus 320, and Pacers are plus 260. I Look, it's not much for your money, but like I'm pretty confident that the Heat are going to win this series. Even worst-case scenario, which is what you think about if you're going to bet a super favorite, you think about what's the worst-case scenario. Worst case is Jimmy, Butler's goes, Jimmy Butler goes down, which is not – I mean, he's been load-managing the whole year. He hasn't really been dealing with too many injuries, and especially in the playoffs, I don't think – it would take a lot to put him out, is what I'm saying. But even if Jimmy Butler were to go out, I still like the Heat. I still like the Heat with Duncan Robinson and Tyler And Drogic is still there and still balling. Kendrick Nunn. Bam Adebayo is one of the best young players in the league. Damn, I, for, I forgot to even mention him. <laughs> I'm saying, I'm, yeah, man. As many times as you I'm can say I'm over here talking Bam about Adebayo, just Tyler Hero. The Heat are a really good young team with, with some of these players. Look, the Pacers kind of got not not a very – if the Pacers were playing the Sixers, I would pick the Pacers. <laughs> but they're not. So, um, That's a okay, hot let's take move for on. another day. <laughs> Without Ben Simmons? Oh, no, anyway, I agree. Let's move on to that, that one. Next series. Okay, Sixers, Celtics, um, no Ben Simmons. Ah. Sixers have been really shitty all season, and in the bubble especially. So is – Long, can you make any case that the Sixers win this? Any case? In a what has to happen? In a perfect world, um, Joel Embiid shows us why he's the best player. Um, I don't see it happening, but in a perfect world for the Sixers, Joel Embiid comes in and is the best player on the court and carries that team. Yep, and. I don't see that happening um, because he hasn't been able to do that. I love Joel Embiid. I want to see him ball out, but I just don't think that he's going to take over. We've never seen him totally take over, and even if he does, he's got to take over. Is still... He's got to take over for four games, right? And and ultimately, the Sixers are going to have to really be able to shoot the whole time. And I know with Ben Simmons out, their shooting improves, but it doesn't really fix it. They don't really have dead eyes. Um, and so uh, eventually, I think the Celtics will be able to double and beat and not suffer too much. Yeah, they got. I and mean, the Celtics just have too much wing talent. Without with without Ben Simmons, you're looking at the best players on that team being Al Horford and Tobias Harris after Joel Embiid. Right now, it would be pretty great to see Al Horford have this amazing <laughs> series and the Sixers play bully ball because really they should. Like if this was on 2K, I might could beat they on Hall of Fame. I might could beat the Celtics. With his roster four times because they have the tools, they just don't play that style of basketball, right? And it is an outdated style. And like we see with the Bucks, the new age big man, Giannis shoots everything inside, but everyone around him is a crazy efficient three point shooter, right? I mean, and I don't even if Kemba is a null for the Celtics, they can still win the series. And who guards Jason Tatum now that Ben Simmons is out? Is it Josh Richardson? Because not not only do you have to worry about that, you have to worry about now who guards Jalen Brown and who guards Gordon Hayward and who guards Kemba. With Ben Simmons, they match up pretty well. And they also have they also have Ennis Cantor. Mm -mm. Ennis Cantor. If Ennis Cantor is on the floor, <laughs> 
and Joel Embiid does not score, <laughs> there is something incredibly <laughs> wrong with Joel Embiid. <laughs> I think something we're not mentioning that needs to be mentioned is I think Boston have the better coach. I do. I think th- I, 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 most I do. definitely. Um, I, I think that they are the better coach team. Um, they've been successful for a while now um, with different rosters moving in and out. Um, I mean, you went from Kyrie to Kimba and you're still very successful. And Isaiah um, Thomas before that. Yeah. I mean, they, they have, they do what it takes to win based on the roster they have. And that roster has stayed talented. Yeah. And they can adjust. And I mean, as simple as it is, they're going to have good sets. They're going to run good plays late in games. And, uh, Ultimately, I trust at least two of their players with the ball in their hands late to create a shot more than I trust the Sixers, and that's Kemba and Tatum because uh, Embiid is not a shot creator. So so if he can't and post I, up, it's it's going to be Tobias Harris or Josh Richardson or Shake Milton off the dribble. And <laughs> what is that? I, uh, I saw – one of the Celtics games where one of the commentators was talking about how they think Brad Stevens will be at least the number two winning a Celtics coach of all times. Um, and I, I am inclined to agree. I don't think he's going anywhere. I think his job is relatively secure. Oh yeah. Um, he's the new Belichick for them <laughs> because where else is he going to go? I mean, college sports may never exist again. So and, and, and I don't think you get a more prestigious job than the Celtics. And this comes no. as a Duke basketball fan. And I don't necessarily want – I mean, Brad Stevens would be a great coach. I don't want him after Coach K. That's cool. You're fine. And, I mean, Brett Brown, he he's built a team. Look, Brett Brown seems like a nice guy. But <laughs> he's not the best coach. He's not getting the best out of this team. I think that's kind of clear. And you right. could say the team doesn't fit for the modern NBA, but – Ultimately, he hasn't made that work, and you could say that the changes they made this year were all to beat the Bucks. And I um, don't see that happening. No, I don't see that happening. I don't see them beating the Celtics on the way. And uh, ultimately, so yeah, yeah, they need to make some changes. Before we move on from the Sixers, I want to throw this trade out at you that I've heard for a while. I've heard it on. Uh, I've heard other people say it, and I swear they copied my idea because I wanted this immediately. Um, but I think they should get Chris Paul I think the Sixers I think the Sixers should try to get Chris Paul um, because him with Joel Embiid would be amazing and I've heard some people say they could do it with Ben Simmons but here's my thought I say you do trade Ben Simmons and you try to get Chris Paul and Shea Gillis Alexander I don't know if OKC takes that they at least think about it right right or maybe, hey, I'll throw in a first round pick. I'll throw in Shake Milton. Maybe they'll do it for that. But to me, if you could, if you could get Chris Paul with Gildas Alexander and Embiid, Harris would fit well. Horford, uh, uh, but you know, yeah. you deal with that. But also, you could try to get rid of Horford and get him to go to OKC, even though they have Stephen Adams. But Billy Donovan, his college coach, Al Horford is there. Maybe you could get rid of Al Horford there and get, get you know, maybe Gallo back. Sign and trade with Gallo. I don't know. I like those teams doing something because I think they have uh, different problems. OKC running those three guards and it's worked well for them. But they could use some other kind of talent. Before we get to the the numbers and the odds in this series – um, I do want to say kudos to the Philadelphia 76ers front office for sticking with Brett Brown. Um, he went his first, what, four seasons. He went 19 and 63, 18 and 64, 10 and 72, 28 and 54 before he turned it around. And a lot of teams would have just given up on him that many seasons in. Um, but he has turned it around. Um, now. Provided... His his total coaching win loss is 178 to 314, so it's still not great. <laughs> um, I don't know how many of those years were 
the quote unquote process. But yeah, all of those <laughs> years when Philly couldn't win a game, yeah, he was coaching those teams. And ultimately, yeah, he did his service to get a chance once they had some talent. But now, but now he's, you're he's never kudos. finished first. He's never finished first in the Atlantic. You're giving kudos to a GM for sticking with him, but recall that their last GM lost his job for having <laughs> for having a, a ghost account, right? What do you call it? <laughs> right? And uh, he had a burner account. <laughs> yeah, burner account. And their current GM is Elton Brand, who uh, Brett Brown was definitely involved in hiring him. So I think it's kind of hard to fire him but not impossible as it will happen after this series ends so the odds on this one the technical odds you're looking at plus 335 according to my bookie for the Sixers and minus 435 for the Celtics yeah I would look I would look to try to find um, a sports book that had the Celtics and five because that is what I like in the series I like the Celtics and five I would agree with that. I, I do think that the Celtics will will drop a game somewhere, um, and I don't think it'll be a big deal. I mean, what these I are want, all still. But what I want is Embiid to go the fuck off and it to go seven. Um, and if that happens, then they're going to trade Ben Simmons because Embiid's going to leave it all out there. But if Embiid doesn't show up, then they're going to trade him. So this is a very important series for how – the Sixers if, lose. In my if, they're, if they're going to trade Ben Simmons, though, they have to do it soon. I think if you do trade Ben Simmons, that means you want to win now with Joel Embiid, and now is not in a year. It is now. Yeah. And that is why, I mean, the trade I said earlier has Chris Paul and Shea Gildas Alexander, which to me gives you both. You've got, you you've right got an aging player that's still very good right. and someone to build around whenever those two are gone. Okay, next series. Now, we're going to start moving faster because these series get a much more boring. But I think the last really interesting one, in my opinion, is the Clippers Mavericks. Not because I think the Mavericks really have a chance <laughs> at winning, but I just think it's going to be an entertaining watch. Um, I mean, yes. I think I, Jazz Nuggets is, is more up in the air. I, I, I think this is an interesting watch. Both of these teams have a ton of talent. Um, however,. I don't think the Mavericks can stop the Clippers at all. Um, I just don't know. <laughs> now, I'll say watching the Mavericks a lot in the bubble, no matter what, as good as the Clippers are defensively, the Mavericks will score. They will score a lot. They are the number one offensive team in the NBA. Wow. Long trivia. Do you know who number two is? Number two offensive team. The Mavericks have been mm. number one. I don't. I don't. Um, it is the team they're playing right now, the Clippers. Oh, wow. I did not know right. that. Yeah, uh, especially with all their rotation well, things. That's and a little the, bit of a surprise. The Clippers are filled with players that can also play defense. Yeah, everybody can guard. And that's going to be the, the biggest thing. We need to remember that Luka is young and that he's about to play the two two of the best wing defenders in the league, if not the two best and Kawhi and Paul George, and they're going to take turns. And when they're not guarding him, Patrick Beverly will. <laughs> so maybe Jermichael Green will spend some time on him. I mean, they have unlimited guys to throw at Luka, and Luka is going to put up numbers because they're going to score, like I said. But, man, at the end of games, you see this in Mavericks games all the time. They can't close. And some of it is being young and – not really having the talent on defense. Um, but a lot of it is like the Harden problem that we were talking about earlier. Luka gets tired, and he's got to shoot. And when that happens at the end of games, I think he's clutch. I mean, I think we've seen him make a lot of big shots, but he loses his legs sometimes. Yeah, it's like, it's, it's um, like his fundamental shooting motion starts to shake on him as he gets more and more tired, which is completely understandable. But Yes, and – Teams have started to figure out that in the fourth quarter, they'll bait him into a step back three, and that is a the best percentage play and for I, them. And he kind of can't help but take it. I don't it. think his decision making is on an elite level just yet at times, especially down late in games. I think he does try to force baskets. Um, you saw that in yeah. 
a couple of games in the bubble. I mean, it's elite all the time except at the end of games. When they're down. And it's usually the end of games against better teams, yeah. right? It's not these games against Sacramento that they pull but off, it's, right? It's these games that are on national TV it's against like when, the Houstons and the Clippers. When they're down so. against a team that is very good and they still have a chance to win, he seems to try to force it. Um, do I think Luca is the best player on that court for them? Absolutely, which is saying something because they still have Chris Tops. Um, but I do, th- yeah, he's, I do think Luca is how, the best player on the court for them. But I do think that he has to, when they're down late in games, be okay with being more of a playmaker than a scorer at times. Yeah, and I think he is in general. Um, but like you said, at the end of games, it's tough um, for him and. They really need Seth Curry to be back in 100% because he gets a lot of shots, and even if he's not taking those shots at the end of games, he relieves some of that pressure on creating offense the whole game for Luka. But what the Mavericks need is to get out from underneath that Hardaway contract yeah. I mean, and get someone Ultimately, else. that contract <laughs> more than worth it with the Porzingis trade. Um, and those contracts combined are not bad contracts. And... It seemed like for what they wanted to be this year, Hardaway would be a good fit. And I think he's played fine. But uh, if they had someone that was worth that contract. He's played fine. If I, they just, had another I just don't. Third, a real piece, someone closer to like a, I don't know, like a Jalen Brown or like a, some, a wing defender that could really score for them and be a consistent threat. That's the next step for them. I totally agree with that. Or right. someone who can really play stretch four with Porzingis and and really play defensively. Now I don't know how they answer that that problem because I don't think they're going to get rid of Hardaway because of his contract. I don't see a team saying yes, that's the contract I want to take up, um, unless there's something else well, they're getting rid of. Which... How many how many years does he have left? Because if that's about to expire, someone could definitely take that. And That's a good question. I forget how many years he has left in that contract. We'll have to we'll have to really look at the Maverick stuff because I think there's a couple moves they can make that will make them a lot better sooner. Um, but to this series, I have a question. Who on the Clippers can guard Kristaps Porzingis? I think it's going to be tough. I think it's going to be a Morris brother <laughs> <laughs> or Jamichael Green. Um, Montrezl Harrell is just now getting back to the bubble. And even if he's at 100%, I think that's a tough matchup for him. And so Zubak is going to be their main guy. So I think in order for the Mavericks to make this competitive, I think Kristaps I mean, uh, Porzingis, which, by the way, I don't know if you've heard this nickname for him, and I hate it, Zinger. Zinger! Um, in Not order for the Not Zinger to go off, <laughs> he – I mean, in order for them to make it competitive, he has to go off, and I think he could. Uh but ultimately, the Mavericks aren't going to have enough stops. And even if Luka is the best player in this series, and he's better than Kawhi, and he's better than Paul George. Which is a big ask. It's a huge ask. It's possible. And you know what else is more possible? That that happens, and they still lose. Oh, because yes. the Clippers are loaded, and Kawhi and Paul George are assassins. <laughs> Especially That's true. Kawhi. Um, good news, though, the Mavs only have one more year with that Hardaway contract. Oh, that's so. great. So that means his contract actually has a lot of value because um, any team that's trying to clear cap for Giannis in the following offseason is going to want to take big expiring contracts. Which I do remember is one of the reasons that they agreed to that contract in, in trading with him is because Cuban wanted to make a run for Giannis. Yeah, and, I mean, if that happens... I can't even think about it. Next series. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next series. We're jumping around a little bit here, but I'm really just going in how they interest me. Uh, and and Jazz Nuggets here. I really like the Nuggets. I like watching Jokic play. I know they've been dealing with some injuries with uh, Will Barton and uh, Gary Harris. Jamal Murray came back during the bubble. Uh, and that has allowed Michael Porter Jr. to step up and show that he is going to be a star, maybe, right? Maybe. Have, maybe. You, have you seen yes. him play much? I have. Um, he's played really well. Um, the Nuggets are an intriguing team 
because I think that they have overperformed the past two seasons um, in comparison to the other teams in their divisions, um, or in their conferences, I mean. Um, they've really overperformed, but I, d- I always have a problem, and I, I used to be a diehard Nuggets fan. Um, and it was I, I think the reason I liked them so much back then was because of George Carl. I loved the way he coached in – in Denver, I thought that the way he had them running up and down the floor and wearing everybody else out was brilliant. He really used the altitude to his advantage. Also, um, just a franchise that's always got a great logo and the mascot name is amazing with so many different meanings. <laughs> 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 but I don't have faith in the Utah Jazz team. And I don't have faith in the Nuggets past maybe this first round. Yeah, I mean, look, the Nuggets are tough because they're a young team that's evolving. But it's like, are they going to have the star power? Or are they just going to kind of hit a wall? And Jokic, as great as he is, he can't be the closer. Jamal Murray has to be that. Or Michael Porter Jr. has to become a star. And I don't think this postseason... He'll be good enough to get it done in later rounds, uh, Porter Jr. Maybe this round he can do it. But as far as later rounds, it needs to be Jamal Murray. And quick question for you, Long. Jamal Murray. It feels like he's been in the league for a while, right? <laughs> I, I mean, it, it feels like him and Jokic me? have been going at, like, going doing this together for a minute. Are you about to ask me how long Jamal Murray has been in the league? I'm about to ask you. What year do you think he was born? 94? 97. Golly, he's, he's so young. 23. He was picked seven in 2016. That being said, Jamal Murray seems like he's hit a ceiling, but he is 23. Like, this is a young team, and maybe they take the step up this year. Uh, I could see I could see Denver surprising us and get into the finals if um, an LA team doesn't make it. I think they're the best bet, um, and I could also see the Jazz, you know, winning on a last second Donovan Mitchell shot in Game Seven. I think that the Jazz have a a decent built core, but I don't think they can take it past um, the Nuggets. Also, Mike Conley's not playing. What he is he is out for a couple of games because he left the bubble to be at the birth of his son. Oh, yeah. I, I remember that being a story at the beginning, and uh, now it's happened. Um, so, well, I was just going to say that Mike Conley had still not been playing great. He was playing a little bit better since um, but, Bogdanovich But that means left, that, but, that they're going to rely on Emmanuel Moutier and Joe Ingles, at, well, Joe Ingles at point forward and Jordan Clarkson. Yeah. Yeah, and the Jazz are already down, Bogdanovich. And I'll kind of push back on you saying that their core is better. I, I completely disagree because I think that Rudy Gobert and Donovan Mitchell don't work together as basketball players. And now as people, it seems like maybe they don't work together. Um, I think the new nickname for Rudy Gobert should be the French Kiss of Death. That's <laughs> messed up. I <Aye>, man. <laughs> My favorite player on that team outside of Donovan Mitchell is probably Joe Ingles just because he is – He's always there. That man has played how many games straight without missing a game? He's a baller. <laughs> he, you know, he w- was um, cut from the Clippers team, the Chris Paul, Blake Griffin, J.J. Redick, DeAndre Jordan Clippers team, and they really could have used him. He hasn't missed a game in forever. So definitely I picked the Nuggets in this one. Their bench I is so much I, stronger. I would, I would agree with that. Uh, it would take a, a really big effort from Donovan Mitchell, and I don't. Look, he's he's really good, but he's not that good, man. He's. I would agree with that. I, I'd pick the Nuggets in this game, or in this series in general. Um, Nuggets in six. I just because I, I, I think that. Yeah, I I don't think it'll be a short series. I think it'll go to six, um, at least five, and that's p- pushing it for them. Um, but I, I do think the Nuggets will will find a way to win this series. And I would almost guarantee uh, at least one overtime game in this series. I think this one of these <laughs> games will go to overtime. I think they had an overtime game in the bubble, and they're just those kind of teams. This seems like a series that like should be good, but both of these teams are competing for 
that weird Western team. <laughs> Like the offbeat, like hipster pick, they're both competing for that. So um, I think the Nuggets Denver and are... Utah, man. You know, Jazz is big in Utah. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Nuggets are minus three fifteen, and the Jazz are plus two fifty five. Uh, would stay away from the money line. Would take Nuggets and six because <laughs> ultimately the Nuggets just have more players. <laughs> they have more good players. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah. All right. Cool. Next series. <laughs> So we are getting into the, uh, well, the most irrelevant are we in the two, I mean, We're in the two East games? Yeah. So we have the Milwaukee Bucks with the soon-to-be MVP Giannis Antetokounmpo. Two versus, times. Yes, soon-to-be two-time MVP. Suck at James Harden. <laughs> um, <laughs> and versus the Orlando Magic without Jonathan Isaac, which would have made this um, a little interesting, at least to see uh, how Jonathan Isaac was. Right, right, right. I, I wouldn't say close. Oh, no. Um, oh, no. As a matter of fact, we'll just get straight to the odds because this series is irrelevant because you know what's going to happen? The Bucks are going to win. I promise you. I promise everything in the whole world. There's nothing that could happen. Nothing that could happen with the Magic win this. Giannis and Middleton go out. I'm still picking the Bucks. <laughs> Dang. Um, yeah, no, I think it'd be crazy to not pick the Bucks. Um, Giannis Antetokounmpo is, I think, the most interesting athlete in all of basketball. Um, is he the best player all the time? No. Is he the best player in this series? Absolutely. Um, and he's coming off of a game of rest, too. So he yeah. got a nice little <laughs> and he, I think he nice passed uh, the rest. CTE protocol, right? <laughs> um, but no, I think it'd be crazy to pick the Magic in this, this series. I think um, it's going to be crazy if the Magic win a game in the series. It's going to be that the Bucks have decided to all leave the bubble and go to the Lopez brothers house in the Disney world campus and hang out there instead. I, I mean, this is gentlemen's sweep I could, at, a, at best for Orlando. I could see the bucks dropping one game because they have been underperforming, but that's it. If they, I, if they drop a game, somebody didn't play the whole time. <laughs> I, I, yeah, it's, at best, the Bucks drop a game. By the way, did you realize that Brooke Lopez w was in some people's consideration for like top five defensive player of the year? No. All right, next series. <laughs> uh, and this is the last one. And I think we've gone through all of them, and then we'll pick our NBA Finals, I guess. But this is also a very boring series, although the Nets have been competitive, stayed to be competitive uh, through the bubble. We both love... Um, Lavert, Lavert is balling out, and I also love Jared Allen. Yes, Jared Allen. <laughs> feel bad for him with that whole DeAndre Jordan situation. I kind of hope they trade Jared Allen to a better situation for him. Uh, the Nets are missing too many pieces to win. Clearly, right? So they haven't had KD all year, of course. We know that, and Kyrie's been out for a while. Um, and even so, uh, is Dim Dimwitty's not there either, right? I don't think so. So, really bleak. They have uh, the remnants of Tyler Johnson on that team. I mean, that team is decrepit, man. I mean, some, some um, of those. They've got some. They've got some good young players. Do you have their roster? Uh, um, I can pull. Let's pull up their roster because I want to go down <laughs> to see how how in the weeds they went on this. <laughs> That's sad. I don't know who the Nets have because their whole team is hurt or just not there. Um. Let's see. They've got wow. Joe Harris. Wow. They've got Lance Thomas. Lance Thomas, former Duke center, now NBA small forward who can't shoot, who has somehow made rosters. I love that guy as a Duke fan. Uh, man, I can't believe he's still in the league, though. <laughs> Holy hell. Yes, Jamal Crawford. They've got Karis LeVert, Jared Allen, Tyler Johnson. They've got Justin Anderson. Yeah. Um, 
Musa. Yeah, D Z A N A N is his first name. <laughs> Musa. Sorry, we haven't done our our research on this guy, but he's Bosnian. Um, Dante Hall. Oh, Dante Jeremiah. Hall, the former kick returner. <laughs> I don't think it's that one. Uh, Jeremiah Martin was a bullfrog. Chris Chioza. Yeah. So, needless to say, I'm not going to put the Nets in this one. Um, Absolutely not. The only interesting thing, if you're a Nets fan out there, is watching to see who's going to be next left season. Next season, yeah, and who you're going to trade. <laughs> um, I think they should have. For the virtual fans, I think we should see real-time reactions from KD and Kyrie. <laughs> Just those two. Now, do you want to know one of the more interesting people that say the the Nets have as their eye on for their coach? Can I guess? Go ahead. Jason Kidd. No, like that's one of them, but no. Who? Greg Popovich. Oh my God! Yeah, right. Um, but the report, the other report, just saying Jason Kidd, Ty Lu, and Jeff Van Gundy. I can just imagine Kyrie, uh, Kyrie or Katie or both being like, "Hey, you know who you need to get if you want to win, Popovich. Show us you're serious <laughs> and get <laughs> the best coach in the game. Show us." They're like, "He's not gonna come here. Prove it to us that you care." Okay, we'll make him an offer. <laughs> All right. Yes, that would be but, great. You know, the world's still flat over there in in Kyrie Land. So, do the Nets do the Nets win a game in this series? I would look if if they were playing the Bucks. I would say yeah, and I think the Bucks are better than the Raptors. But I I think they're going to sweep because I think the Raptors do not play down to competition. They always play up. Nick Nurse is so good defensively. And the Nets just don't have the talent to keep up. And, yeah, I, I mean, I think it's going to be a sweep. If Levert goes off again and gets 40, maybe. But the Raptors have people that can defend him. That's why, going back to the first series we talked about, why I don't think someone can guard LeBron because no one could guard Karius Levert on the Blazers. Well, and part of Karius Levert's problem is he is a very tall point guard, which leaves him open to have the ball stolen a lot. Yeah, I mean, he's a small forward um, that plays points, which, right? And and when right, you have a right. smaller dude on him, that's good. But he was also just shooting over everybody in the in that Blazers <laughs> game. Uh, so it, it'll be it'll be interesting um, if they can, you know, win a game and show us a little bit of what those young players have to offer. And like you said, see who's going to be there next year. Yeah, but nothing really to watch in this game because no star power. I mean, in any in the series, in any of the games, no star power. Siakam. I, guess, I mean, I guess Siakam. If you, if you really want to see a highlight reel, Lowry charge. I mean, <laughs> um, you got Fred Van Vliet. Yeah, man, that dude's about to get paid. Uh, okay, so we've done all the series. Uh, now I just want to look at the odds and let's pick who's coming out of each conference, and our final predictions. Uh, so. I think I know where you're going for the East. I mean, yeah. Right, and I think they've separated themselves, right? Um, the Bucks definitely. I, they haven't played exceptionally well in the bubble, but I do think the East is, is weaker right now. Um, and so it makes sense for the Bucks to be the team that makes it through all that. So I think it'd be hard to not pick the Bucks to represent the East in the finals. Yeah, I mean... I agree with you. I think they're the favorite. Um, but as far as their odds are concerned, they're minus 175. That means you have to put down $175 to get 100 back. Uh, the next highest are the Raptors at plus 350. So you put down 100 and you get 350. Okay. Um, and then. That's not a bad bet. The Raptors to take. are not a bad bet to take. I totally agree with that. Um, what about these other teams? Celtics plus five hundred. I would also put money on that, but that's the last team know, I'd man, go for because there's one more. Mm-hmm. You're gonna the say the Heat, Heat? plus nine hundred. 
I mean, if you want to run that risk and put a hundred dollars down on the heat so you can win a, a nine hundred bucks, that's mm, well. Let's map know, it out for the heat. But, so the Heat beat the Pacers, and then they play the Bucks or the Magic. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, the Battle of Florida Heat yeah. Magic. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no. Um, see, my thing is, I, I have a hard time with the Heat beating the Bucks. I think the Heat are talented. I think they're good. I don't think they have anyone that can stop Giannis. I think um, that the Heat will give the Bucks more problems than people realize because I think the Heat win two games in that series. Yeah, I, I think they win two games at least in that series. I, I think they do defend Giannis better because they have a good coach and they're going to dare him to shoot. And if they put Bam out of bio on him, that's cool. Um, Jimmy Butler can keep some minutes on him in the perimeter at least. But I think they're going to crowd the paint. They're going to shoot threes. And if they're hitting their threes, they're going to have the pieces. Because stylistically, they are – they are built to run a little more with uh, their talent and their shooting um, just with so many guys that can handle and create offense with none and hero and Duncan Robinson and Jimmy Butler and Gordon Drogic, all of them can create offense, but they're also one of the best defensive teams in the league. And that's what it's going to take. I agree. I think the bucks are definitely favored, but I think ultimately like you said, the Heat would push that to six and just tire the Bucks out for a longer series versus the Raptors or the Celtics. And which I think is the more interesting mm-hmm. matchup is the mm-hmm. Raptors Celtics because I do think that can Same. go either way. Same. Be- um that that two three could really go either way. Um I have a hard time deciding who I think is gonna win if if both of those teams win in round one, which I think they will. Um have a hard time deciding. Yeah, and that ultimately series. that's why I think Milwaukee is such a strong favorite because that series is going to be such a fucking grueling yeah. one. I can only I'm I'm pretty sure. I mean, yeah, I can't imagine either team really coming out and just sweeping. I mean, I guess Toronto's more likely to come out and be dominant, but just with the firepower the Celtics have on offense, they're going to win a couple games. They are. I mean, Van Fleet. Yeah is really their best score at the end and the Celtics have Kemba and Tatum. So I think they'll at least make it competitive. Yeah. So, but as far as those long shot odds go, I think the Celtics are probably where you get the best value. Um, unless you really feel like Toronto is a, is a notch above. Cause I think Toronto has a better chance to be mm-hmm. Milwaukee, but at plus 500, I like Boston there. Um, man, I say that and then I regret it. Maybe <laughs> I do trust the Raptors a little more. And as far as the story goes, I could see the Raptors making it back to the finals without Kawhi. And also, both of those teams are coached yeah. really well. Yeah. I mean, that's um, with the all three of these teams that are long shots with the Raptors, the Heat, and the Celtics. I mean, those are arguably the best coaches in the league. And I am Popovich uh, being the only other one that I would consider. I mean, Nurse... Spolstra. Not even not even Doc? Yeah, I mean, yes. Doc is great with stars. Yeah, Doc is there too. Yeah, you're right. Doc is great. So, I mean, yeah, but I, I would put those three up there as in like a a great top five coaching. Yeah, those those five are phenomenal. Yeah. Um, and definitely have an advantage over the Bucks as far as coaching goes. And the Heat and the Celtics, at least, have better go-to players in the stretch down the stretch than Milwaukee does. At least offensive. Yeah. It it'll be it'll be something. Um so as far as that goes, I think I'd still just put money on the Bucks because I think the Bucks probably lose in the finals if they lose. Uh which I guess brings yeah, us, to, brings the us to the West. Um and I already see a few odds I'm more likely to pull the trigger on here. So we have uh, the Lakers at plus 160 and the Clippers at plus 170. Um, I don't know. That has the Clippers barely favored more than the Lakers, which I think is right because I just think the Clippers have... I would agree with that. Uh, the Clippers are my favorite to make it to the finals. Um, I think they have the easier path to the finals. 
Um, I mean, they win against Dallas, and they play the winner of Utah-Denver, um, which I think they would handle them pretty easily. And then they would have to play I, the Lakers, most likely, or, you know, if the tr- the Blazers continue their streak yeah. or if the Rockets It's rather going to be the Lakers or one I of mean, these underdog teams that have had to beat the Lakers already. Right. So I, I think the Clippers make the most sense to make it to the finals. Um, but I'd, I'd be interested on the odds on some of these yeah, other teams. Yeah, so we have Houston at plus 600, which is the next in line. It's not a bad yeah, bet. Yeah, not bad. Uh, it makes me think twice about those plus 500 Celtics odds. Um, in the east but odds i do like plus a thousand for the nuggets i like that um although that means they probably have to beat the clippers and the lakers but if things kind of go to shit in this western conference then i like them coming out out of the other out of all the teams if an la team doesn't make it i think it would be the nuggets so plus a thousand seems appealing to me then you have the mavericks and the Jazz both at plus 2,000. I think there's no way, because even if they somehow make it out of the first round, they just don't have, no, that's not gonna happen either one. No, Luca would, <laughs> that would be truly Luca legend. Sorry. Uh, you, sorry, you said the Mavericks and the Jazz at yeah. plus 2,000, which means that the Blazers and the Thunder are below yeah. that? Um, and I think the Blazers have lower odds because of what they've done and just having who they play first. I think, the, and I understand that, but I'm interested in those thunders. Well, the thunder, thunder are the worst odds. in um, in the West at plus three thousand. The thunder and are the below Blazers the Blazers. Are plus twenty five hundred, and I think both of them are low because they have to play the Lakers. Um, if the Thunder were to play the Lakers, it would be in the second round, right? So no matter what, they have to get through the Lakers. Unless the Blazers right. accept them, yes. Um, and you see that the Blazers have higher odds, and I think, or better odds than the Thunder. I'm surprised they don't have better odds than this, or, or worse odds. Excuse I thought me. that I thought they'd have. I thought that of the teams, I thought the Mavericks' odds would be lower than they are. Um, I just don't see the Mavericks getting past a lot of yeah, these teams. And I think. See, this is what confuses me. Uh, because I don't think, I think the Mavericks is, are plus two thousand and only plus two thousand and not worse than that because Luca and because people have faith in Luca, and Portland, I thought that would be true with how great Lillard is playing. I thought they, I thought you wouldn't be able to get this good odds. I thought a lot more of the public would have bet on this, but the fact that it's still second lowest in the West makes me think that my bookie and. Everyone in Vegas, everyone wants you to take the Blazers right now. Take them. Underdogs, take <laughs> them. Take the Blazers. Uh, which is concerning. So I'm going to say that the best bets for the West are the Nuggets. I think that's the best bet in the West at plus 1,000. The best bet to make your money. Yeah, for yes. what you're getting. Um, if you... Let's see. Plus 160 and plus 150 for the Lakers and Clippers. So if you were to put $100 on the Lakers, you get 160 back if they win. If you put $100 on the Clippers, you get 150 back. Yeah, so it's either or. You can't pick both of them. If there was a way for me to... If you can find a bet that says one of the L.A. teams will win, I would take that even at a even at the not most favorable odds, because I do think one of them is going to come out. I don't see the Rockets, especially not knowing Westbrook's injury. I don't see them no. making the run. And I just think even even if Lillard doesn't has an Iverson-like postseason, uh, they're just going to run out of gas because I, I don't see them taking care of the Lakers and then taking care of the Rockets and then beating the Clippers. That would just be insane. Um, that's a path. I mean, that is a path to to lose in the finals. Right. I mean, <laughs> I mean, look, it, there's no freaking way they could beat the Lakers and the Clippers. 
Portland. They, they match up horribly against the Clippers. So, I th- I think they can handle the winner of the Rockets Thunder game. I think that if they could get past the Lakers, they might move past uh, yeah, the next I series. I don't I don't see them beating the I Clippers. Agree. I, I, that's and I think the Clippers could beat the Lakers as well, um, but I, I think that's the matchup that we're gonna yeah, get. Yeah, and I know that that's the most in terms of like upsets. That's the most or the least interesting. Here's what I will say. I don't know what I, what direction it is, but if you have an instinct uh, for the Lakers or the Clippers, like you saying you think the Blazers could beat the Lakers. I would say go with that because when something happens, when we really, really want a matchup like we do with the Lakers Clippers, and we want it so bad, we never and we wait it. months in quarantine for it. <laughs> it it's never happen. happens. So that could also be true because the Lakers or Clippers could still win it all, and the city of LA will just not have a parade. Which, if the Clippers win at all, I can tell you we weren't going to have a parade. It was just going to be Steve Ballmer yelling, going down the street in a convertible. (laughs) 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 Woo! Woo! (laughs) We won! We won! We won! (laughs) Microsoft! Uh, That's that's hilarious. uh, if, if if you're asking me to pick my finals, I think it's going to be Clippers Bucks. I think that is mathematically the pick. Um look, if the Lakers beat the Blazers, Lakers in the finals. I just think that's gonna happen. Um <laughs> but a lot of it is just wanting the legacy of LeBron to grow. Uh, I'm not a Lakers fan at all. It's so weird. I find myself pulling for them now living in LA watching LeBron. I hated them growing up. Uh but yeah, I think I I'm gonna say if I was filling out a bracket for this, something some, something we missed out on this year, I would put in the Lakers beating the Raptors in the finals. That's right. I I, I do think that it's going to be a one and a two seed. Um, I think Lakers Raptors is another good shout. I don't think it'll be a one and a one, and I don't think it'll be a two and a two. Um, I think it'll be either the one seed from the East or the one seed from the West versus the two seed from the East or, you know, vice versa. Um, So that's why I'm saying Clippers Bucks, but the Raptors Lakers is another good shout. Yeah, man. And I I think it would be super interesting if we were each half right and it wasn't Lakers Bucks, (laughs) but it was Clippers Raptors and we see Kawhi versus the Raptors <laughs> and if the Raptors win everything Kawhi's done is now negated and he's never done anything right that would be how it would work he, I don't think that's how it works but his I get championship what you're ring would be taken away from him <laughs> I think that we've kind of gone through our extensive breakdown yeah, man. of the NBA playoffs prior to you know, game one of the non-play-in series. Yeah, um, which was a great game. Um, we will have to check it back in after the first round or towards the end of it as we can kind of see how those series are going to see see if there are any other surprises. See how right or wrong yeah, we were. how right or wrong we were. Maybe, maybe if this Blazers-Lakers series starts off hot on Tuesday – um, maybe we'll have to get a podcast done after those first couple games. Um, I want to go back to something you said way early in the podcast, but you mentioned you were willing to bet anything Uh-oh. on the Bucks winning game series yes, one. Yes, the Bucks will beat the Magic. I'll play anything on that. Yeah, yeah. Yes, okay. uh, whatever it is. If <laughs> if the Bucks lose, I want mm-hmm. you. <laughs> to rock just the straight mustache goatee for like a week mustache goatee <laughs> like m- mustache Ooh. soul patch oh don't give me an excuse <laughs> to do that <laughs> I-, I don't think you're gonna lose that bet but i just i want to make it interesting <laughs> and I-, I i will do the same if the magic beat the milwaukee okay Bucks. that's great <laughs> um okay so <laughs> that's it for our predictions <laughs> Subscribe to this podcast and other podcasts now from stage to stream. Okay, then let's just do this.
outro real quick. Is there anything? We kind of did most of it. Actually. Didn't we? I don't think so. We kind of said when we? we would be back. Oh, yeah, we did. So, yeah, we did, definitely. Yeah, we can... We can just I forgot. Fade out. <laughs> we talked for two, we talked for two hours. I forgot. Well, we can keep this in as our goodbye. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, man. I'm gonna stop recording. Peace. Thanks, everybody. Thanks,